Greetings, LGR here with a, an LGR thing, and specifically this thing. This is an IBM 5154 enhanced color display, introduced in 1984 for the IBM PC range of computers. The IBM AT was around at that same time, but it would work on pretty much anything as long as you had the appropriate adapter installed inside the computer. And what's interesting about EGA cards is that it will actually support these other monitors. So we have the IBM 5153 CGA monitor over here, which is just your four color standard thing, a step down from EGA, of course. And then we have the IBM 5151, the original monitor for the IBM PC. And this just does a MDA, a monochrome display, and green screen phosphor looks great. Mm. I really like the designs of these monitors. They look a little bit like a microwave, but uh, a very pleasing, technologically advanced, slightly futuristic microwave. What I'm going to do is uh, upgrade, <laughs> upgrade, you know, in 2016, one of my PCs with EGA graphics. And we're gonna plug this thing in and, uh, you know, sort of compare it to these i mean maybe not directly but you know we'll, we'll i'll show like what the difference is between the color modes and uh let's go back to 1984. check out that 5154 badge mm, that looks nice and i also have here the i assume that is the manufactured date so we've got july of 1987 is when mine was put together and yeah, not a whole lot to see here on the back of this thing, especially since the friggin' camera is not... Yeah, forget that. There's nothing to see there anyway. Uh, what there is to see, though, is the video card that we will be using. And uh, yes, the astute among you will realize this is not an IBM card or if, of any kind. This is a, a card by a company called Ava. This is the HEGA2, the H-E-G-A2, manufactured in 1988. <laughs> Ava Higa. Sounds like something you'd say when you're punched in the gut. Ava Higa! <laughs> so, anyway, this is an EGA card. An 8-bit one, not one of the long, crazy ones that you would often see from IBM. I don't have one of those. Those are considerably harder to find. Uh, not that these are very common either, but, you know, that is what it is. So this is kind of an interesting little card. Uh, well, all EGA cards are, as far as the ones that I've seen. So yeah, we have the EGA connector right here. But of course, if you switch around things, then this will work with CGA or monochrome. And we have these two RCA connectors here, but unlike CGA, that is not for composite video output. So you can't plug this up to TVs. Uh, no, these are actually for plugging in different uh, sort of expansions, video controllers and uh, feature devices. So. Uh, yeah, don't mess with those like plugging in TVs that won't do anything. And then of course we do have These little switches here, which the first four right now in that configuration They're telling it to go into EGA display mode to be hooked up to an EGA monitor and uh, I think the five and six especially the five is telling it that There's no other video cards plugged into the computer and that is the configuration that we'll be using This will be a standalone card in the PC that I install this in. Uh, it's also got another little connector here for plugging in light pins, I believe. And this is like another feature connector, but uh, yeah, we're not gonna mess with those. So yeah, let's uh, install this in a PC and see what you get. Now I would be installing this in my IBM AT here as I think that would be very appropriate, but the power supply is currently blown up and uh, needs repairs, I just haven't gotten around to doing that yet. So, I'll be installing it in my IBM XT here instead. And it's a very capable machine for EGA. Uh, maybe not some of the later, more advanced ones, but it'll work. And it'll uh, allow me to show some really cool insides. This thing is neat. See, I told you it was neat. I love working on these things. They're impressively complex for their day and yet very simple and straightforward uh, so what we're going to be replacing is this longest card here this is a cga card it's uh well it's ridiculous but uh, that's got to come out of there at least for what my purposes are you could leave it in it's able to work with two cards uh but you know i'm just gonna make it a little bit simpler so this is what i was talking about when i was uh <laughs> saying those really long 8-bit cards 
Uh, a lot of the EGA cards, especially from IBM, looked like this. But, you know, years later they were able to cram everything into something that is, uh, well, much less than half the size. The wonders of the modern day. And uh, that's it. It's installed. Really as simple as that. Except, of course, one more little thing here, and that is uh, these little dip switches here. On IBM PCs, the older ones like this, you're going to have to worry about those in that white box there. Specifically switch 5 and 6. Uh, if you're changing around the video type at all, you're going to need those to be in the correct position. So I'm actually going to have to switch them both to on in order to let it know that it is a special video device, which is EGA or VGA. And so yeah, they, they kind of thought of everything and that just lets the BIOS know what to look for. All right, everything's starting up just fine here. And we'll be loading MS-DOS 3.3. Or I guess PC-DOS 3.3. I, I don't know. I guess it's MS. I don't, I don't know. Which, which one do I have? This is, this is PC-DOS. IBM-DOS. Hmm. Who cares about the date? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. So let's get over to uh, the C drive. And I'm um, going to actually play some California games. Not because it's like the greatest game ever, but because it's a pretty good uh, measure of what it's like to go from CGA to EGA. In fact, it's got a lot of different things. It's actually really fun to compare the different modes. I'd like to do a more involved video looking at all these modes. I just don't have enough set, uh, stuff set up to do that right now, and I'm feeling kind of lazy. So let me just show you what CGA looks like first, in case you're not familiar somehow. Yeah, man, let's play some California games. So we can compete in the events, but I don't want to. I'm gonna practice, because I'm terrible at this. Well, let's play some good old footbag. Also known as Hacky Sack. So yeah, it's in the warmer sort of CGA tones at the moment. You got your oranges, yellows, greens, reds, that kind of thing. But it will switch over to the cooler colors, the cyan, magenta, white, black, that kind of thing. And those are the two color palettes that are very commonly used. And I guess this one's more of the red and cyan, but uh, that's cool. Oh my gosh. This is the slowest. <laughs> I forgot how slow this game is on an XT. Um, it is not good. Oh, I forgot uh, how to do it. I can move. That's the head thing. Well, whatever. I suck at this. Let's switch over to EGA, though, and look at the difference directly. And here it is an EGA. And you'll notice it's actually a lot quicker. <laughs> Which I'm assuming has to do with uh, the higher amount of video memory. As far as I know, that particular board has 128K. Which is uh, a far cry more than what a CGA board would have. I'm sure it's faster in other ways too that I'm just not aware of. Some boards had 64K and uh, for EGA. This one, of course... I mean, not of course, I don't know. I think I read somewhere that it was 128, but uh, either way, neat. Quite a substantial improvement in color depth, and speed, and all sorts of uh, wonderful things. I'm not sure how do we get out of here. How, how do we get out, man? Ah, there it is, control escape. So, I mean, even the menus look better. I mean, how sweet is this? This is just awesome. EGA, man. Let's do some half pipe. This is by far the one that I'm worst at, so uh, that should be even more amusing. But yeah, even this, just, it just looks better. I'm not sure how well colors are coming across, but I mean, they are vivid on this monitor. It is just, it's great. Oh, it's really neat to see like EGA in its most native form like this. Uh, super sharp. I mean, razor sharp. It's, it's pretty awesome. What do I do? All right, here we go. Yeah. Oh, man. That was gnarly, man. Oh. Yeah, just look at those scan lines. You know, it's just something, you know, you're not going to notice it when you're just playing. But uh, you can see them. And I mean, the pixels are just, they're delightfully sharp. I, I enjoy all these kind of things very much. 
No. Hmm. So let me see if I can find something else to show on here really quick. Because I can! Of course, it's got to run on an XT, though, and that, uh, uh, limits my selection somewhat. So here's something I don't try very often. Super Solver's Treasure Mountain. An edutainment classic. Should look pretty sweet in EGA. I'm loading very slowly, but looking sweet once it gets there. Play it, PC speaker. The master of mischief has stolen the crown and hidden the treasures of Treasure Mountain. My God. Hey, help these friggin' elves. Yeah, I have three and a half inch floppy versions of this that I play normally. So I haven't tried the five and a quarter inch, but apparently it's working. Hi, my name is Flutter. All right. Get out of here. <laughs> well, you know, I might be a, a little slow here, and uh, the screen is drawing like crazy, but that's... that's okay. Yeah, let's go outside. So, this is the outside. That's good. And, uh, man, this guy... <laughs> poor Super Solver is walking... So slow. And look at that screen scrolling. Mmm, so smooth. So that was a famous problem with, uh, well, CGA, EGA, pretty much anything on the PC for a while, up until, like, VGA and SVGA, of course. Uh, scrolling was a pain. So, yeah, you weren't able to do, like, smooth scrolling platformers, you know, like, per pixel kind of scrolling. Famously, that was corrected with id Software and Commander Keen. They were doing some crazy, crazy stuff, and, uh, yeah, on EGA. But, of course, that was with faster hardware, too. On an XT, you're kind of looking at slow EGA stuff anyway. Like I said, I would have preferred to use this EGA card on my IBM AT. I need to get that thing fixed. Let me see if I can get at least one dude. There you are, you jerk. Yeah. Suck it. These words end with T. If you can see one more word that ends with T, it might be this one. Alright, this game is incredibly slow. Let's see if I can find something just a little bit faster. I don't know if it's going to be any faster, but we're going to try Platoon here by Data East. The EGA version, which I just happen to have in the box. Uh, if that's EGA, that's not very impressive, I gotta say. I guess it is EGA. Sweet. Ah. Uh, right. Entering the combat zone. Oh, man, that's, that's pretty cool looking. Uh, I don't... I don't know how to control anything. Um, these controls are ridiculous. Ah, no! Well, this is awful. All right, I'm gonna try fast food dizzy, cause uh, I haven't. <laughs> so your system has a choice of keyboard control only. All right. No music. No ad lib installed either, so it's gonna be silent. But that's okay. We're not. Well, I guess we won't, because it never loaded. So, uh, I guess that was just a little too much for it. <laughs> ah, that power off. I love the noises this thing makes. But yeah, this is such a neat monitor. I've been after one of these things for like six years, pretty much. 
Oh man, probably longer than that now, it's 2016. A long time! The thing is, they're really not that common. A lot of people had other EGA monitors, and EGA was only around for a few years anyway when VGA came and took over. Since it was more or less backwards compatible, it just, you know, there was no real need for EGA monitors. VGA took off. And so, yeah, this, this is such a cool thing, though. Um, if you can find one, I highly recommend grabbing one. <laughs> it's just, you know, expect to pay like 500 bucks. Uh, there was one recently that sold for that. I didn't pay nearly that much. Uh, I got mine for closer to 300 for this and the um, EGA card itself, which is a pretty good deal. Those cards go for like 50, 60 bucks on their own. But, uh, you know, even that's kind of a premium. Since I only paid 10 bucks for my IBM 5150 and like, uh, what was it, 30 for this XT? Of course, those were thrifting finds years ago and whatnot, so yeah, whatever. This stuff's expensive, man, but it's fun. A lot of fun, and I hope you had fun watching this, even though I didn't uh, get to play more of the games that I wanted to. I'll need to fix up that uh, IBM AT, and well, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching.